Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good day, or wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Silburn Show. And today I've got a very exciting guest. And guess what? She's an author. It's so important that we record and that we capture events in our lives. And Ms. Janetti Barrett is my guest. Janetti, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank, thank you for having me. Pleasure is mine. And, and you know what? I had to make sure that I emphasize the E. Thank you, because not everyone does. All through my school life, it was really? Janet. Really? Janet? Not Janet, Janet. So should and definitely not Janetti. Should we go back and find all those teachers, all those persons, and tell them that they made oh, a big mistake? Oh, too much paperwork. Too much paperwork. <laughs> Far too much paperwork in the world already, really, no. Well, listen, thank you for coming on the show. And, um, and we're going to talk about the, this book here, Triumphant mm. Through My Early Years yeah. by Janet Barrett. One of the things, um, recently there was an article in the paper about sociology, whereby there was, uh, they're saying uh, Caribbean men are so are prone to be um, not taking care of their families. Yes. And it was in a book, and it was deemed to be not very correct, or it, it didn't really spell the proper mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. And what came out of it is that people are, were encouraged, and I felt people were to be encouraged to write their story. Absolutely. To, to say what it is. And there seemed to be an influx of books these last days. Yes. You know, tell me, what inspired you to write this book in the first place? Well, number one, I suffer from dyslexia. Yes. So it was a challenge to myself. And secondly, I've been a young carer from the age of two. Mm -hmm. And because I had so many negative things in my life, they yeah. always stained my brain. Yes. So decade after decade, I went through in a very, very negative, aggressive phase, which mm. I had to keep fighting. And the only way that I could get through that, metaphorically I spoke, pictoriously I spoke, yes. and writing things down. And that was the way I released the tensions within myself. Mm. It was the best way I had. And you mentioned about dyslexia, and, and, and it is something, I had a guest recently also about dyslexia. Yes. And the guest said, it's so strange, the, the whole learning aspect with person with dyslexia, they made the word so confusing. She, she, she said they should have just called it deng, deng or dang, yeah. but calling it dyslexia. But, but, but it seemed to be, being dyslexic, it seemed to be a, a positive thing in the, these days. It, it, is, it is. I think... Um, we're very creative yes and i think we have to be creative because we're trying to make people understand what we don't understand yes so we portray it in a dramatic fashion mm. well i certainly do most of my things is very metaphorical yes and um, the way i write through the book is extremely metaphorical um, because i i over analyze things mm. people with dyslexia over analyze yeah. everything because they're trying to work out where the words go yes. we see things inside out and back to front and then we have to picture it into our yes. head. So when we're trying to explain it, it can be metaphorical. And you start to dance and jiggy yeah. and, and rap and, and all those other And things. gesticulate. Yes, yes, yes. That, that's very interesting. So, okay, let, let's go back now into uh, Janetti. Yeah. You know, um, your parents were pre win Rush. Oh, yeah. I, that's, that, that's very interesting. I mean... Um, because your book talks about the history as well. Yes. Um, but let's go back to the start of the history. 190. My father was born in 1909. Yes. And a lot of people, they just cannot contemplate 1909. Yes. I mean, this is before the Titanic. Yes. When people yes. think of the Titanic, it's just like donkey years ago, yes. the Titanic, which yes. was 1912. So when my father was established here in this country, mm. he had a great big house, a car, he was part of the American naval forces. Right, right. So he was well established in England before any of the Windrush generation came along. Yes, yes. And what holds great pride in my heart is that we were one of just a few families besides the Jews that rented out our rooms <laughs> in our house. Yes. But it didn't have that derogatory sign. Yes, 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 yes. So we saw when they we saw the influx. And, and, and the pain behind the influx of the Windrush mm. generation coming over. And we felt as a family that we needed to do our bit. 
you know, like when they used to do the pardoner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was part of what we did as, as well as renting our rooms upstairs to, in order to give people a chance to get a job. Right. Because if they had nowhere to live, they wouldn't be able to get a job. Right, so that's very crucial. So your father, 1909, Nine. Mm -hmm. and your mother? My mother, 20 years younger. Okay, okay. Yeah. She and was born 1929. Was she born in? She was born in Jamaica. Yes. My father sent Lucia. So, question, so therefore, she came also before, or yeah. she came on the wind rush. She came before the wind rush as well. Before. Wow. So, so tell me now, with, with what's happening now with the wind rush recently? Um, mm. what, what's your take on that? Because it didn't directly affect you no. or your family. No. But you also had a, a stake in it because you were a part of yes. the group that helped. Them. That's right. So we were part of the first people that helped to establish the families that came over. Yes. You know, by giving them somewhere to stay. And for many, many years, even when they went off and did other things, they would come and visit the family home mm -hmm. and chat about who they brought over yes, next. Yes, yes. Because yes. a lot of them, they came and then they had to bring their children one by one or two mm -hmm. by two mm -hmm. over. And this is what we're hearing now, the effects of what the second generation of children are going yes. through and some are, are being deported, which is despicable. And the last but one of seven siblings growing up in the 60s, That's 70s. That's me, the six out of seven, yeah. Hansworth, Birmingham, United Kingdom, skillfully reflective, it tells a horrid story of a child who was born to care without herself being cared for. Now, I'll sort of break that down, born to care without herself being cared right. for. Now, I don't know what was in my parents' head. Mm. I'm two years old, my sister being 11 months younger than me, yes. born with autism, which of course they didn't know. Yes. No one knew what autism was. So my other sister, 16 months older than me, yes. so I had her, she was quite poorly. She had bronchitis and bad ears and wobbly legs. Mm -hmm. And there's my autistic sister on the other side. And there's me in the middle. Yes. I was the one that was told to look after the younger one. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as I can see, my mother and father had my brother first, yes. and then six girls. Yes, yes. And all of them, myself and the others, were all okay. So they continued with their siblinghood, and then I came along, I was okay, I joined in, and then all of a sudden, my sister Pam came along, yes. and something wasn't quite right. And I don't think they knew what to do. Mm -hmm. But because I was next to her, I was just kept with her, and it never shifted. Yeah. It just continued like that, yes. all through junior school and all through secondary school. And I became the primary carer of her all through school years yes. and still yes. now, in our 50s. Wow. I'm still doing it. Mm. The, the, the government have, uh, I think every year they have this program about carers, little carers. Yes. Um, I believe at that time, they never had that level of support, was it? No. Yeah. No. Uh, and the main thing is black culture, Asian culture. Shh. Yeah, keep it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But mum says to us, if you tell anybody, then I've got to take you away. Mm. So, of course, those words are in my head. If I say anything at school, yes. if I moan about what I'm doing, what are they going to do? Yes. They're going to split us up. Yeah. I didn't want to be split up from my yeah. family. Yeah. I didn't want to stop caring for my sister. I love all my family. I didn't want to be the one that was going to be taken away because I opened my mouth. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, one of the things um, which, is, which is said about your book here, and I, yeah. and I made some notes, it says, your words have spelled pain, anguish, disillusionment, disgrace, guilt, yeah. self-loathing, selfishness, and disregard. But it's also spelled out love, contentment, astonishment, mm -hmm. excitement, belief, relief, and promise. Yeah. What, what is the message that you, you, you want to get through to persons in a book like mm -hmm. Triumphant Through My Early Years? Yeah, well, I think there's a lot of people, youngsters at school, mm. who are giving problems. Yes. But sometimes they might be like me, and yeah. they can't speak about the problems just in case what they're thinking, they, their family's going to be split up. Yes. So they might be going to school... Um, in pain, um, disillusioned, troubled, confused, yes. and want to speak but can't because of the fear of being taken away. Right. And also, it's an emotional roller coaster because you feel guilty for feeling like that. Yes, yes. But then, when you do something right, 
and you get something done right at school, you do something right for the, yeah. the person you're caring for, you feel that love, you feel that empowerment, you, you feel that grace that's coming from that. And it's good. So you're always on this seesaw. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it, it's so confusing because you're young and you cannot calculate what those emotions mean. Yes. And no one is explaining it to you. Now, I worked for a company called West Birmingham Crossroads, which was caring mm. for carers. Mm. And I deliberately targeted to, to get a job in that place because it was caring for carers. Mm. So the carers were caring for someone, but then they then also need... our company came in and cared for the carers, wow. which gave them respite, which allowed them to be Janetti, Patrick, yeah. Cynthia, yeah, you know. So it's interesting. So what you're saying? So so you have realized that by you being two, the carer, yes, left left and right, yes, never had that support. No. So you have seen the gap. Absolutely. And now it's like you're wanting to care. Okay, not care for yourself, but yeah. caring for those persons in yes. that situation. And, yeah. and this this is what Jan can care is all about. Yes. I go into the family, mm. I look at the person being cared for, yes. but I also do the outer sphere and care for the family members also. Right. Because I want it to be a continuity of a unit of care that everybody's contributing, because I was the only one. Yes. And sometimes, just because you're good at something, doesn't mean to say you want to do it all the time. Mm. If, you're dry, if you're a driver, and you always have to drive, that means you can't go out and have a drink. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so somebody has to take the turn. So when I go into a family and they have training to look after whoever they need to look after, I make sure I train all of them as well as looking after the person. So they all get a feeling about how that person is actually feeling. Yes. You know, so it's an injection of emotions throughout the family and it engages everybody. Right, wow. So I do look the whole picture and and the, and it encapsulates the whole mental health it issue does as well. it does because it, the mental health is so broad spec now i i was speaking to a lot of people about um, ptsd mm. right post-traumatic stress disorder yes, yes and i think anybody that's gone through any type of trauma doesn't have to be a soldier or anything yeah. else it could be something traumatic in your childhood what do counselors always say how was your childhood? Yes. Why did they always stand back to They'll that? Go back to that. Because that That's is the, the blueprint, the scaffolding mm. of how you set your mindset in adult life. It always goes back. Yeah. And you have a regurgitation yeah. Of memories that sometimes yes. you can't get out of your head like and, a like and, a record and that's why sometimes people sometimes may blame the psychologists they do. because they're saying they put things they in their feed brain. The, they plant the seed back yeah but they forget to water it mm. and see what comes out of it and then prune it. <laughs> so, so is it that the psychologists or the counsellors sow the seed or, or they identify the seed? But they, they, yeah, but sometimes you see, they, I, if something's wrong with you mm. and the minute you say, like say the word cancer, for instance, yes. you go to the doctor and the doctor says you've got cancer. Sometimes the person doesn't want to say the word. The minute yeah. the, they say the word, it becomes a reality. Yes. So when the counsellor says, I believe you have, then it's, there is something properly wrong with me. Yes. Not, I think there's something wrong with me, there is something wrong with yes. me, now what do I do? Mm. So you need the counsellor and the person needs to have that continuous engagement. Mm. But what's happening now, resources means that you only get so much mm -hmm. and the rest is left behind. That's why within my book, I also put the reasons why I wanted to write. Yes, yes. And the mechanism of what the counselling done for me and my own ways of trying to solve my own problems, what yeah. I was going through. Because I, put, I put in there um, why I chose to write and not block. So yeah. I didn't just write the story. I put the reasons why I needed to write yes. it. The fact that writing became a morphine drive that, yes, for me. Yes, that cut out the pain. That, that's right. So the cancer has passed, that plagued me, released a strength within me I didn't know I had. Yes, it was difficult. Yes, it hurt like hell. Yeah. I want to seize the writing, but I so wanted my freedom more. Exactly. So, so, so what you're saying with this book now, while it has helped you and yes. freed you, yes. you have seen whereby this book can help and free someone else. It's already doing it. And it's already doing it. Any so experience, any, any sort of stories? Um, 
because my work y yes. is a safe place, yes, it's mental yes, health, yes. I can't say where or whatever, of course. but it, it is working because as I was going through it before it's released, yes. because I started to realise things within myself, I was able to speak one-to-one -one yes. with someone else and recognise yes. their issues, their triggers and says, yes, yes, that's how I felt, yes. without saying that's how I felt, but then telling them, try this and try that yeah. and then they're coming back and telling me yes it works i feel better so, i feel freer so therefore this book is um, a book which is written by a doctor i say a doctor and she may say what are you talking about but i say a doctor and i tell her why because you said this keyword became my morphine drive mm -hmm. that cut the pain to the cancerous past that's right and in order for someone to cut out cancer out of someone who was cancer they normally doctors with their scalpel and all those other things remove surgically removed it. you know mm. so 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 and, and i believe this is one of the the essence because honest i've not read much of it but based on the little feedback i got from it and and based on what you're saying it is somewhat like a release agent absolutely yeah absolutely i needed to be like that yes because of the work that i do yes so any of the families that get that, they need to see me in it. Mm. It's an autobiography. Yes. It's authentic. Part an autobiography, one. part one. It's supposed to be your truth. Yes. So it cannot be a fabrication. And it is only aged between 2 and 11. Yes. So that's how far my memory goes. That's how acute mm. the negativity in my life has been. And that's why I called it in the mm. book, Japanese mm. Not Weed. Yeah, because wow. that virus of negativity cut through concrete stone invades mm. people's gardens and it ripple through my body yes. like yes. oh gangrene so you're, so you're, you're i had to cut it out yes, yes by writing it acknowledging it analyzing it digesting it and freeing it yes yes that's my own resource well, well, ladies and gentlemen, you need to capture this book. And um, where can persons get this book from? It's on Amazon right mm. now at the moment. It's on yeah. Amazon. It's um, through the Marcia M. Spence Publishing House yes. on Amazon. It's part one. It's out right now. When is part two coming out? Part two and three. Part two is my teenage trenches. Yes. And part three is Truth is My Freedom. It will be joined together in one book and it will be out by September 2019. Am I hearing that as a lyricist and as a performer as an uh, as a actress or whatever? You've been doing your research. <laughs> is, is it turning into a film? You know what? If someone wants to franchise that, yes. because I also script write, yes. because I'm an actress as well and yes. a performer, you're already halfway there. And ladies and gentlemen, she was doing some little beat a while ago. Maybe she was doing some rap beatbox. I think my guy may have actually... Um, captured it so we may oh. blackmail on it. <laughs> Copyright. Yeah, right. So the 9th of December, what is what the That's big day? my book launch, yeah. The 9th of December yes. in Birmingham yes. is at the Hilton Gardens Inn Hotel yes. in Brindley Place. It has its own car park mm. as well and it's on a Sunday yes. and it's between 6 p.m. and 10 p.m. Is it free or people can go stand up? You can come, it's a five pound entry. Yes. But on the website, if you're getting the tickets on the website, yes. it's £22 for the signed book yes. and the entrance. Yes. Yeah. And, and the website is? The web, the, the Marcia M. Spence. Marcia, okay, okay yes. so Marcia, Marcia M. Spence. But every, every, everything will... Amazon. We'll it's on every, Amazon. Yeah, we'll put everything down so people can Thank actually you. get all of that. Now, before you go, there's one thing I want to ask, because you've said a lot there, but I want to capture something from you, like what is your favourite mantra, um, a, a positive word that you yeah. say to people that... You know. Be you, stay true, and follow through. Be you, stay you, stay and true, stay true, and, and follow, follow through. Wow, wow. Is there any last word you want to say about this book? It's deep, mm -hmm. it's challenging, there's triggers in there, but at the end of the day, it's going to give you a restoration of fresh air you never thought you'll breathe again. Wow, wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have heard, and it was quick and brief, but powerful, um, Miss Janetti Barrett. Thank you. Um, the triumphant, my... Triumphant truth. through 
my early years. Triumphant through my early years. Of course I can get it right. I wrote it. <laughs> it's mine. It's hers, you know. So I want you to make sure that you actually get this book. One of the key things she said in, in, about this book is that um, it's her morphine drive that cut out the pain to the cancerous past Amen. that plagued her. Now, many persons also are plagued by the past. And because of that, you need words. Words, as she has said, words have spelled pain, anguish, disillusionment, disgrace, but at the same time, love, contentment, astonishment, hope, relief, and promise. So there's hope and there's a future, no matter what. Now, this is a tool in her hands, which can be in your hands as well, for you to get, so you can be free and also to free others. And I tell you this, something that I believe strongly about. My book is not out yet, but it's going to come out because I'm challenged. Because guess what? We have got to write our own story because many people write our story and it is Ooh. their story. So we have got to write our story and this is Janet Barrett, Janetty Barrett's story. Get it. And I'm watching thank you. you. Thank you. Oh, thank Ms. you. Ms. Barrett, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Thank and you. thank you so much for coming on the show. My pleasure. Awesome, thank awesome. You. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on The Silburn Show. And remember to like, subscribe. And of course, to hear more about Janetty Barrett, check out our website, which we'll be putting on. And we'll put all the details for Janetty Barrett mm -hmm. as well. And thank you very much. Until next time. Thank you. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on The Silburn Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it. But the important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comment, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you. I saw you there. You subscribed and you shared. Thank you so much. See you next time.